Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Greetings, welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabir and we have been discussing English language teaching. We have started a new module and in the last session we discussed grammar translation method and direct method. In this session we will discuss audio lingual, silent way and total physical response. So before we proceed further, let us quickly recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, as you see in this slide, we studied the observations and principles of grammar translation method and we also looked upon the uh, direct method. In addition, we understood that grammar translation method views culture as a part of literature and we had uh, understood that it believes in language uh, grammar and uh, it adopted deductive method of learning language. Besides, we also looked upon the direct method of teaching and in the direct method, the objective is to make the students communicate in the target language and here the grammar is taught inductively. Culture plays a crucial role and also we looked that how spoken communication is largely emphasized in direct method. However, in grammar translation method, reading and writing were the essential components for language learning. Now, in this session, we will look audio lingual method. So, the lens of an example and we will observe its findings. So, let us try to understand what is audio lingual method, but before we go ahead, let us quickly go uh, for learning outcomes. After this session, you will be able to understand audio lingual method, the silent way and the total physical response. You will get to analyze techniques and principles and you will also be able to develop a general understanding of both the methods to learn language teaching, pedagogy. Now, continuing with the point that what is audio lingual method? It is an interesting method that is being widely popular in language teaching pedagogy. And it is not only popular that uh, it comes out as a language uh, teaching uh, methodology, but it gives up a new perspective to the classroom. So, what is this new perspective? how it incorporates uh, language skills and how it develops the learner's ability to think in the target language. We will try to understand through the example. So, at first let us uh, look up at the observation. I will try to write it down of the example that I will narrate. So, first is audio lingual method that we are studying and the first thing that I am going to tell you is that as we enter into the classroom, we notice that students are attentively listening and as the teacher present a new dialogue or uh, he or she presents a conversation between two people, the students are expected to actually memorize those dialogues. Now, this is an interesting point to note because here listening is emphasized. In last two methods where we talked about grammar translation, we talked about direct way of approach, you know, we, we looked that how uh, uh, memorization played an important role, but reading was the essential skill that was taught at the early stage. But here memorization of the dialogues takes place and listening is something which is taking at the very outset. So somehow it brings a different uh, view of looking language learning and teaching pedagogy. 
The students know that they will be expected to memorize the conversations that are happening in the class or the teacher uh, whatever he or she is narrating. The other thing is that teacher repeats the dialogue. Now, when I say repeat, I mean that uh, a particular dialogue is being repeated again and again. So, repetition or you can say a uh, drill takes place. So, instead of writing repetition, I will make a point that drill and practice is a major drill and practice are major component of audio lingual method. Now, uh, what does this drill and practice bring? This drill and practice helps the student to memorize the content and that particular student is expected to produce the same sort of sentence in different context and in varying situations. Now, let us try to look up again here that teacher uh, for example says good morning Ravi and the student says uh, uh, good morning teacher and the teacher says how are you and again uh, the conversation goes on the student replies I am fine how about you you know these type of fragmented uh, sentences are being learned by heart. So, rote learning is uh, also emphasized in audio lingual method. A uh, teacher you know says listen one more time. This try to understand uh, that all the time you know she is saying uh, repeat, drill, practice, repeat after me, memorize this and so the listening is built upon this idea. And uh, not only this, the teacher uh, switches role in order to practice a little more. So, uh, teacher and student relationship is very sharp in audio lingual method. Why? Because teacher keeps on switching the roles and you know once the teacher speaks a, a sentence, student replies. And when the student says teacher replies, so somehow teacher becomes a participatory uh, element in this uh, approach. Now, a teacher uh, you know uh, selects two students to perform the entire dialogue for the rest of the class and when they finished the others do the same. So, not everyone has a chance to say the dialogue, but some students present it. So, a kind of modeling is also happening and you know in audio lingual method even when a teacher is taking a part or teacher is producing an example in front of the students, he or she is expected to produce a very apt and a very appropriate and accurate sentence. So, in this way teacher is considered a model for the learners and uh, teacher is a source of authentic language use teacher is the person who plays an important role in audio lingual method and in addition the instructor is expected to be a model and he or she must be having an efficient command over language so that uh, the, 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 uh, the model comes up with, uh, with uh, best outcomes. Now, if we look aga again in this slide you know, uh, the transformation drills takes place. This type of drill asks students to change one type of sentence into another. Uh, for example, an affirmative sentence is being changed into negative and negative is changed into uh, 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 affirmative and you know a simple uh, affirmative or simple declarative is being changed into interrogative. So, you know a lot of sentences are being given to students and uh, students are expected to keep on practicing until they uh, receive perfection. So, uh, this method also focuses on writing skills. But since it starts with listening, it goes one by one and uh, it first goes uh, with listening, then, then 
uh, talks about speaking obviously because the conversation is taking place then it takes up to reading and writing so um, what are the essential observations that you are seeing in this example So, dear learners, what are the observations do you see in audiolingual method or you notice? At first, we have noticed that the teacher introduces a new dialogue or uh, he or she speaks. So, listening uh, takes place, but at the same time, a dialogue is being included or a conversation is included. So, it is not of a literary text or piece, it is more of a conversation and dialogue. The second thing is that we have noticed over here is that the language teacher uses the target language. So, uh, the medium of instruction remains target language because the conversation and the you know the, uh, the 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 question and the answer the follow up the turn taking the closing all goes up in uh, in target language so here the medium of instruction is not the native language it is the target language the other thing to notice here is that the language teacher introduces the dialogue by modeling it so, modeling is something which is expected and uh, here teacher plays a plays an important role and uh, uh, you know if there is any mispronunciation uh, takes place then teacher is the person who corrects it. So, uh, correction of mistakes also take place and that correction is being done by the teacher who plays an important role or you can say central role in the audiolingual method. Another thing which we can notice in this, uh, uh, in this method is that the students repeat each and every line. So, repetition like I said in the last slide or you can say practice is the essential tenet of audiolingual method. So, drill and practice I would like to mention here. The next thing is that the students uh, uh, stumble over one of one of the lines of the dialogue. The teacher uses backward build up drill with the line. So, uh, this is mainly used when we are modeling a certain myth, a certain way of, uh, of, of language and we are expected to produce in the same way. However, if there is a little change takes place, then we are supposed to repeat it from the very beginning. And this was largely observed in audio lingual. In the drill, the teacher initiates a chain. So, teacher is the person who initiates, teacher uh, is the person who initiates the drill. And, uh, you know, teacher is the source of encouragement, provides motivation. If the student provides a right answer, then he or she is expected to uh, uh, build a rapport and says uh, excellent or good and give remarks on it. The other thing which I am mentioning over here is that teacher also uses spoken cues and picture cues. So, spoken cues and picture cues were also observed in audio lingual method. So, in this students you know should learn to respond to both verbal as well as non-verbal stimuli. And when the students can handle it, the teacher changes the question rapidly. So, that is how the entire uh, scenario takes place. Now, coming up to techniques, dialogue memorization, drill, uh, complete the dialogue and grammar game are some of the uh, techniques that are being uh, seen in audio lingual method. So, let us quickly see what are the principles 
that guide audiolingual method first is that language forms do not occur by themselves they occur most naturally within a context the native language and the target language have separate linguistic systems so they understand that when a person speaks uh, memorization become becomes essential why because if memorization is not done and if a person is given a chance to apply his own understanding then there is a large chance of the interference of mother tongue be it grammar or pronunciation so in order to produce exact a uh, model uh, the learners are expected to differentiate the two important languages that is native language and the target language the other thing which is to be noted here is that the purpose of language learning is to learn how to use the language to communicate uh because it is more realistic it is uh, uh, it, it gives us space to use those dialogues or utterances in communication so spoken communication and listening communication are the highlights of this method learners should be kept apart so the native languages interferes as little as possible with the students attempt to acquire the target language like i mentioned in the second sentence this is almost uh, the same uh, point that learners are supposed to uh, analyze that native language should remain uh, uh, apart uh, from the target language here teacher plays a role of model now in the direct and in the grammar translation method we studied that teacher was a central tenet here we are uh, watching that teacher is the role model and teacher produces the most accurate Uh, uh, language so uh, modeling is something which is expected in audio lingual method another thing to note over here is that language learning is a process of habit formation we have largely seen that teacher has asked to repeat has asked the students to repeat the sentences uh, teacher has asked the students Uh, to take roles and uh, uh, then say the same sentences in different contexts so what is happening is drill is happening practice is happening and students are memorizing those drill, uh, those sentences as a result a kind of habit formation is taking place and therefore the audio lingual method largely believes on the idea that language learning is a process of habit formation another thing which uh, is mentioned in the slide is that pattern practice helps students to form habits which enable the students to use the patterns so they are set pa patterns and those patterns are being practiced and those practice become uh, the practice helps the students to develop habit and it helps them to use the patterns in varying situations it is important to prevent learners from making errors uh since uh, self correction was largely emphasized in direct method here there is a little difference and in this uh, method of teaching uh, audio lingual stands on a point that uh, errors should be corrected so there is a less chance or you can say there is a very narrow platform for making errors be it pronunciation or sentence structure speech is more basic language and uh, uh, written is taken up at a later stage language and culture are interconnected so when the student greet and when the student uh, uh, opens up a conversation culture is also reflected and that is how audio lingual method connects with the culture so culture and language are perfectly infused here but there are certain things that uh, are uh, that are highlighted and these are that uh, the native language and the target language are considered different interference of mother tongue are not being uh, considered uh, there is a less chance 
or you can say a narrow platform for making errors. Modeling is highly emphasized. Pattern practice is largely considered. We will now try to review the principles of audiolingual method. There are several questions that are lined up. So, first question as I am uh, noting it down here in the slide uh, says that what are the goals of teachers who use the audio lingual method? And the simple answer to this question is that teachers want their students to be able to use the target language communicatively. So, communication is excessively highlighted here. <clears throat> the second thing is, uh, what is the role of the teacher when it comes to audiolingual method? Or what is the role of the students here who learn uh, by audiolingual method? And the answer to this question is that the teacher is like a leader. Okay, so teacher plays the role of a leader or teacher is like a leader. What does teacher do? Teacher directs and controls. Directing and controlling. Uh, he or she is responsible for providing her or his students with a good model of imitation. So, imitation to be noted here and model is also important, modeling is also important here. And both these points are the answers of the question that uh, what is the role of the teacher? As far as students are concerned, students are also imitators, but they are the imitators of the teachers. So, students are the imitators, they copy or they imitate. Students are the imitators of teachers. Now, the next question is that what are some characteristics of the teaching and learning process? So, vocabulary items, okay, structural patterns, dialogues are presented, are presented uh, to the learners and they are being repeated by the learners and uh, repetition, backward build up, chain or substitution or you know transformation and question and answer all take place when it comes to teaching and learning through audio lingua. Now, the next question. So, the question here is that how are the feelings of the students dealt with? And the answer to this question is that as such there are no principles or no guidelines to deal the feelings of the students when it comes to adopting audiolingual method. The next question is that what areas of language uh, skills are emphasized or what skills are emphasized in this. So, vocabulary is though uh, kept minimum, uh, spoken and listening is mainly emphasized. And how is evaluation accomplished? So, uh, though I have uh, less little space, I will write down here that uh, the answer to this question is not obvious because we did not actually observe the students in this class taking a formal test, but we would have been seeing that it was uh, you know discrete point in nature and each question would expect the students to drill uh, to, to produce the accurate sentences. So, the more the accurate is the better the uh, marks the student would get. 
Now let us try to understand what is silent wave. This is a next step. In fact, it came after audio lingual method and uh, it has brought certain new points in the language teaching pedagogy. Uh, the first thing is that uh, learners are uh, re learners are made to realize that memorization is not the only way to learn a language. You can think in the language and then produce it. And uh, this thinking process is something which is largely emphasized in this method and this method is popularly known as the silent way. However, it looks a little puzzling but we will again try to understand the conceptual framework of the silent way with the help of an example. So, now let us try to take up an example that how silent way works and uh, let me take you to a classroom where the silent way is being practiced. So, as we take our seats, please have a look at the slide and uh, the silent way, uh, uh, let me write it down here. So, as we take our seats, the teacher has just finished up introducing a uh, silent way in let us say uh, in any language. The teacher walks to the front of the room, takes out a mental pointer and points out to a chart hanging the uh, hanging to the front of the room. So, use of chart paper or you can say blackboard or any other similar thing can be used in order to initiate the silent way. The chart has a black background and is covered with small rectangular blocks arranged in rows. Now the design of the chart paper or the blackboard is to be considered here. Each block has a different color. Now, since there are blocks and blocks have different colors, some may be in red, white, green, yellow and so on. This is a sound color chart. Each rectangle represents one English sound. For example, the block 1 represents K sound, block uh, second represents ma sound, block third represents r sound and so on. There is a white horizontal approximately halfway down the chart separating the uh, upper rectangles which represent vowel sounds. So, you know the consonant sounds then there comes vowel sounds different colors representing different vowels and some represents for example a sound then the longer a sound then there could be a sound and so on. Without saying anything the teacher points in succession to each of the five blocks of color above the line ok. For example if the teacher points out this block there is silence. The teacher repeats a pattern pointing out to the same five blocks of color. Again, no one says anything. The third time the teacher does the pointing, the student says ka as she or he touches the block. And similarly, when he or she moves to the second block, the students point out and say it is ma, then say it is ra and so on. So, several students came up uh, producing uh, consonant sounds and several students produce different vowel sounds and that is how they understood the differentiation between the vowels and the consonant sounds. Now, there are other major things for example, when a person is uh, introducing sounds and uh, gliding takes place. So, the teacher points out to the rectangle that represents a sound and he or she puts his two palms together then separates it uh, apart representing that the glide is taking place and therefore there is a change in the sound that happens. So, in this way the silent way takes place 
and this is very different from the methods that we have studied in the last session and the method that we studied in this session also. So, now let us quickly uh, understand our observations. As far as our observations are concerned, the silent wave The silent wave talks about blocks of color without saying anything. So, the blocks of color represent English sounds and uh, uh, these English sounds include consonants and vowels or vowels and consonants. The second thing is that the teacher points out again back to the uh, you know color and when the uh, students say nothing the teacher points out to the first block and says a uh, and the teacher and the student again you know uh, repeat and then say uh, the same sound. So, several students now could uh, produce a sound for example, uh, a sound and a sound and so on. Here in the silent way the teacher is not the model, it is to be noted here is that a teacher uses gestures, blocks, diagrams to show up certain things in the language, but there is nothing like modeling that takes place. So, no modeling is being used uh, in the silent way. Students take turn tapping out the sounds and uh, uh, students participation is also uh, considered here. Students take turn. The teacher works with gestures and sometimes instructions in the students native language also to help the students to produce the target language sounds. So, it is not the one language uh, use. Uh, this method consists of both the languages. So, depending upon the student's level and competency, a teacher uses a language. So, it is not necessary that the teacher would use only English language, but he or she may incorporate other languages uh, uh, depending what language does, uh, uh, students know. So, uh, bilingual approach is being adopted here. Now, the next thing that the teacher points out to the words A and uh, uh, he or she may use rod or a kind of scale to instruct the students that a particular sound is being pronounced in such a way. So, uh, teacher sits down and silence is is something which is largely taken up here. This, uh, you know, students uh, develop a thinking and they relate uh, the sound with a particular word and they, uh, after, after analyzing it and thinking it, they produce up uh, with an example. So, a particular word is being uh, pronounced in such a way and how it is similar with respect to the sounds that are being demonstrated by the teacher that is largely emphasized here. As far as pronunciation is concerned, a student if, uh, if a student has trouble in pronouncing part of the phrase, then teacher using gestures isolates the trouble and uh, so a help from the teacher is also expected. Here teacher is playing an important role by listening attentively. Since there is a lack of space here, but I will try to make a point over here that teacher uh, uh, attention of the teacher plays a crucial role in this method. And uh, the students practice commands with compound objects. And as such, there is no homework in the silent way. Now, let us try to quickly see the techniques sound color chart, okay. Uh, teachers silence, okay, 
peer correction is there self correction gestures are there and also word chart are used to help the students understand the norms of the language and how language is being used what are the principles of the silent way let us look up at the slide the teacher should start with something the students already know and build from that to the unknown so it is not that teacher all of a sudden brings a new concept and uh, students find difficulty in uh, uh, understanding it rather a teacher tries to come up with something which is very familiar to them and also it grasps the attention of the learner so teacher always starts from something which uh, students already know and then he or she constructs blocks one after the other the second thing is that language learners are intelligent here they are not uh, novice and bring the, with them the experience of already knowing a language so they are able to communicate they are able to think when they have a certain basic knowledge of the language and they know how to use it so it is not taking us to the scratch rather it has uh, been constructed on 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 a block so teacher works with the students while the students work on the language the other thing is silence is a tool here and it fosters autonomy or the exercise of initiative the teacher speaks but only when necessary and there is one more point that i'm missing over here is that students need to develop their own criteria for correctness so teacher doesn't tell that what is right or what is wrong or doesn't guide exactly like in other uh, methods here teacher is are supposed to facilitate the understanding and students need to develop their own idea of correctness and therefore the self correction is highly encouraged in the silent way so dear learners let us try to review the principles of the silent way now the first question is uh, as i'm writing over here that what are the goals of the teacher uh, who use a silent way so students should be able to use the language uh, for self expression and they should be able to express their thoughts opinions perceptions and of course feelings and in order to do this they need to develop independence from the teacher and they no, need to have a sound understanding of the language so students become independent by relying on themselves they correct themselves they build their own strategies of corrections the second question that arises here is that what is the role of the teacher in the silent way and what is the role of the students so the teacher is a uh, is basically playing a role of a technician or you can say a teacher is working as an engineer here uh, only the learner can do the learning and teacher is basically relying on what the students already know so you can say that a uh, teacher is like a is like an engineer okay and teacher should respect the autonomy of the learners in their attempts at interacting with the new challenges as far as the students are concerned uh it is important to understand that their role is to make use of what they know to free themselves of any obstacles and their attention is give, is is largely directed to the learning task and collectively they find themselves engaged in the learning activity or in exploring the language so the next question that comes over here is that what are some characteristics of the teaching and learning process so students begin their study of the language through its basic building blocks 
or sounds. So, they are in th these are introduced through language specific color chart. So, relying on what students already know uh, from their knowledge of their native language, teachers uh, lead their students to associate the sounds to the uh, target language. So, objects or blocks or kind of diagrams are being used to generate the students uh, thoughts. The students receive a great deal of practice with given target language structure without repetition. So, there is a big no for repetition. Now, the next uh, question that comes over here is that how is language viewed and how is culture viewed? So, languages of the world share a number of features. Uh, so, each language has its own unique reality or spirit. So, their culture is often re reflected in their thoughts, in their perceptions and whatever they speak, it is being influenced with the culture. So, culture, I am writing here, culture and language are interconnected and inseparable. how evaluation is accomplished. So, all the teacher may never give a formal test, uh, but he or she assists students learning all the time. So, teaching is subordinated to learning. And the teacher does not praise or criticize students' behavior or uh, would not interfere when learners make mistakes. Uh, rather, uh, teacher is expected to uh, help students develop their own criteria of learning language and uh, uh, correcting themselves. Dear learners, now let us try to understand what total physical response is. This is very interesting. Why? Because it incorporates fun and it also brings liveliness in the classroom. How it is being incorporated in the language learning classroom and how, how it helps the students to demonstrate extraordinary language skills, we will try to understand. So, at first we will take up an example. A teacher goes into the classroom and he or she asks the students to stand up and following the instructions, every student stands. After uh, the after this instruction, the students are directed to move towards their right and all the students moved that way. Then they are directed to move towards the left, then uh, the teacher uh, asks them to sit down, then again asks to stand up, then they are asked to jump and so the students are involving their body while learning a language. Now, I am sure your question would be that how they are learning the language? They are actually following the instructions. Uh, this is not merely the following of instruction procedure. It actually demonstrates or it helps a learner to practice active listening. And I have personally seen that teachers are incorporating total physical response by converting this method into a game or into a kind of activity where students who do not follow they would keep on uh, going out from the game and lastly three or four students would be left and then they would be engaged in some speaking activity and the teacher declares them the winner and the runner up and so on. So, it brings us excitement because it involves a physical uh, activity or you can say it involves a physical response students are very excited about. And therefore, listening, uh, not just pass, not just listening, but active listening takes place, and that is the goal of the total physical response. Total physical response also involves the idea of uh, learning by doing and learning by solving complex problems. 
So, whatever you do, whatever you write and whatever you construct, at the same time you say it, you will be able to develop language skills more efficiently. So, we will now look up at the principles of total physical response activity. What happens in total physical response activity is, I am writing over here that observations are there. So, a command takes place and who gives a command? The teacher gives a command. And who follows it? Student follows. You, I can write it here. Student follows the command. Students. Another thing if you have noticed is that students had to say nothing. Right. So, uh, there is less participation of the learners. I can write over here that the students say nothing. The teacher gives the commands quite quickly, you know stand up, sit down or while standing move towards your north direction, look up, look down, uh, clap thrice, jump thrice. Uh, bend to uh, upwards, I mean you know you have number of instructions that you can do. So, teacher always uh, gives command quickly. So, command is there, but it is also quick. Another observation which you might have noticed from the example that I gave you is that a teacher directs a students and this uh, direction is more central to the teacher. So, teacher is the central part of the classroom or you can say a central tenet. And you know teacher can give any kind of command for example, laugh, jump. Uh, such kind of commands might not have expected by the students. So, it largely says that the student had have to be quite conscious and he or she have to, has to demonstrate active listening. Focus is the key concentration. So, a student who has not spoken before uh, you know can give command and similarly the role can be switched and uh, you know non-verbal communication can also be taught through total physical response for example shaking hands uh, greeting to each other um, um, uh, inviting a guest and you can tell the students to uh, find a pair and also uh, introduce a new kind of vocabulary to them so this will bring excitement and at the same time they will be able to develop more curiosity towards the language use. Vocabulary is essential here and vocabulary is largely put up by the teacher. It is just the focus and the concentration the student has to take over. Now, let us see the techniques of um, total physical response activity. Use commands to direct a behavior, role re reversal can also take place and there is action sequence that can be utilized. What are the principles when it comes to the total physical response? So, meaning in the target language can often be conveyed through actions. Since it incorporates body language, it involves nonverbal communication and it involves direction. So, we can eventually say that meaning is something which is embedded in the target language, but it can be understood and it can often be conveyed through the movements, through the actions. The other point to notice over here is that students understanding of the target language should be developed before speaking. So, if you ask the students 
to uh, jump thrice or if you ask students to laugh or to shake hand with the peer member, then you should know that the sound knowledge of English language is already embedded in the learner. If a learner does not know what does shaking hand mean or if a person does not know uh, what does jump mean or what does uh, laugh mean, then it would be difficult for them to un to practice this approach. So, a sound understanding of language is required and uh, this can definitely bring a lot of fun, curiosity and liveliness into the classroom. Students can initially learn one part of the language rapidly by moving their bodies and students can learn through observing actions as well as by performing the actions themselves. So, uh, learning language is more interactive and it is also effective when it takes up a fun component and spoken language is emphasized over written language. So, dear learners, let us try to review the principles of uh, total physical response method of teaching language and I am putting up a slide. Let us quickly see the uh, uh, outcomes in the form of question and answer. Uh, what are the goals of the teachers who use total physical response or TPR? So, teachers use TPR to, uh, to, to show that the students enjoy students enjoy their experience in learning to communicate in the foreign language and TPR was essentially developed to reduce the stress of students. The next question uh, that is being put up over here is that what is the role of the teacher and what is the role of the students? So, initially the teacher is the uh, director. And the students are imitators of her nonverbal model. So, students are imitators. Of her or his nonverbal. The next thing is uh, what are some characteristics of the teaching and learning process? So, the first phase of a lesson is of modeling. The instructor uses commands to a few students then performs the actions with them if he or she wants. In the second phase, these, uh, the see, these same students demonstrate that they can understand the commands. by performing them alone and the teacher then recombines the elements to the com uh, commands and students develop flexibility in understanding uh, the familiar as well as unfamiliar utterances. Then the point is uh, how is language viewed and how is culture viewed? So, just as with the acquisition of the native language, the oral modality is primary. So, oral language is primary. Culture is the lifestyle of the people who speak the native language or and the actions that are being carried out in the total physical response activity would uh, reflect the cultural uh, 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 actions as well. The other thing is uh, what is the role of the student's native language. So, TPR is usually introduced in the student's native language, but after the introduction, the native language is not, uh, is not used. However, target language is often uh, incorporated and that is how students find more focus and concentration in learning a new language and they also generate interest. The second thing is how evaluation is accomplished. So, as far as evaluation is concerned, teachers will know immediately whether or uh, student uh, understand by observing students at, uh, responses and actions. So, formal evaluations can be done in the form of activity and informal evaluations can also be done in the classroom where the assessment is not taking place.
Now, let us come to the conclusion. In this session, we studied three types of methods. We studied audiolingual method, we talked about silent way and we also talked about total physical response. So, let us quickly see that audiolingual method have an oral based approach, modeling is more preferred, listening is taken up at the first place and it mainly focuses on drilling students in the use of grammatical sentence patterns. There is a less chance of uh, errors or you can say a less uh, a narrow platform is being provided to the learners for making mistakes. Silent way is used with advanced students who have a substantial background of language. So, silent way establishes a connection of a learner with the language and it also builds a rapport between these two entities. It is important for the learner to have a basic knowledge of uh, a language. He or she must be able to uh, he or she must be able to have, he or she must have used this language in a variety of context and in that way uh, the learner will be able to think critically or uh, will be able to analyze uh, the statements when, uh, when the chance is given to them. Silent way is far reaching affecting not only language learning but the way one perspective the living of life itself. So, it brings a change, it gives a chance to reflect ourselves, it provides the opportunity to think in a deeper perspective and it builds a construction on how to look up a language with different lenses. The other point is that a lot of target language structures and vocabulary can be taught through total physical response and we also studied that. TPR or total physical response is widely popular in teaching directions, in teaching vocabulary, in teaching active listening and in making the learners more active and um, helping them to learn with uh, fun. Here are the references. I hope you find the session interesting. We will come up with other two methods of language learning in the next session. Thank you very much for joining. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. And here I am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude immoral, vulgar and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvellous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays 
contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.